All right. So uh, my name is John Long. Uh, I'm joined here today by Alistair Wilkes. We both work at Launchable, and we thought we'd talk a little bit about test impact analysis and predictive test selection. Um, Al, uh, why don't you kick us off? What, what is test impact analysis? Why does it matter? Yeah, so um, good to be here. And uh, test impact analysis is all about um, you know, assessing the impact of every test, uh, automated test that you're running. So, you know, different tests um, uh, may be more valuable to run in different in different cases. And so test impact analysis is all about analyzing um, a change that's been made, whether that's looking at code or, or, um, or things around the code to uh, assess which tests are going to have the best impact um, against uh, against that code. And typically, it's about running less tests, like in the context of uh, a much larger test suite that you only want to run a few tests for each change that, runs, that comes in. That's right. That's right. Exactly. I mean, um, so as test suites grow, um, as a product grows, you you can find those tests can take um, lots of minutes or even hours, or, or maybe they run every night, and so that reduces or that lengthens the uh, the feedback delay to developers um, when they make changes. So, using test impact analysis, you can identify a shorter amount of or a smaller amount of tests to run, um, you know, closer to the time that the change is actually being made, which provides faster feedback. Right. And this technique, it's been around for some time now, right? Yeah, it, it has, especially um, especially in the uh, in practices of test impact analysis that involve um, directly looking at code, uh, code uh, directly creating mappings between uh, application code and test functions, which usually involves analyzing the code itself. Um, and now, uh, as new technologies and approaches come around, we're seeing other we're seeing other approaches. Right. So the traditional approach is really more um, syntactic code analysis. Um, that's that's a good transition to talking about predictive test selection. So what? Yeah. What so um, yeah, exactly. So predictive test selection is it's kind of a branch of test impact analysis, or maybe it's a particular approach. And the key word is predictive. Um, so in, in contrast to um, to other methods of test impact analysis, um, which is like a which creates a direct correlation between code and test, predictive test selection uses um, machine learning uh, from historic test runs uh, to to create a, a prediction on which tests need to run based on the code change. Um, and so we've, we've seen this uh, as uh, AI and machine learning becomes um, even more popular or more embedded in, in companies, um, we're seeing this take off. And one of the reasons that this is um, a particularly uh, appealing approach is that it works um, across all different technologies, all different language stacks, um, and uh, you know works on tests that maybe don't have a direct correlation to code, um, like end-to-end -end tests, for instance. Right. So in cases where you're using more the traditional approach because it relies on synthetic code analysis, you're um, that's very language specific. Whereas with predictive test mm -hmm. selection, it doesn't. It doesn't rely on that. What? What? It, so you said it's looking at historical test runs. Um, how does it build up? You know those relationships. Yeah. So you need to uh, first you need to train a model, and so um, you can do that either by looking at um, by feeding historic results and changes that were made in builds, or you can um, start training a model. If you don't have historic results, you can start changing training a model with your existing builds. Um, every time you run a run a build and test sequence, you can um, feed that data into a model, and um, and the features of the mo features of that data include things like that you might want to use includes things like um, the files that were changed, how many lines were changed, maybe the um, you know the the committer author of the of that commit, perhaps 
Um, and then on the other end, we're looking at um, predictive test selection would look at the, the actual test results of what happened. So which test, which test failed and which test passed. Um, and we don't, you don't necessarily have to look just at the test results. Um, you can also use other factors to influence uh, which tests to uh, which tests to surface or which tests are the most important, like um, uh, duration of the test um, or um, or historic failure rate, like a test that always fails or a test that always passes, depending, you know, regardless of, of what change. So it's not always just about um, this test, you know, this code change and this test passed or this test failed. Um, you can start feeding other um, information into a model as well to make it more useful. So we're actually playing around with predictive test selection at Launchable. It's kind of our primary thing. Um, we're really trying to turn this into a turnkey service. Um, Al, maybe you could kind of talk a little bit about the results that uh, you can expect with Launchable. We've seen some some great results, um, in, including reducing uh, reducing test automation times or, or automated test execution times by up to you know eighty percent um, while still. Uh, maintaining a very, very high level of, of confidence in, in that change. And what that allows uh, teams to do is take a test suite that runs, say, every night uh, and takes several hours um, and now run that every hour or after every merge or even on every pull request. And that also lets uh, teams that have even a 25-minute pull request um, you know, set of unit tests, unit integration tests, they can turn that into uh, just a few minutes. And that really, really speeds up the cycle time, especially when you're early in the development process. Um, you still want to run the, the full suite later on in the process, um, but this this just gives you more flexibility about which tests to run uh, when. Right, so um, just some statistics there, we're looking at like being able to reduce a five hour suite to, um, just an hour. Um, so if that's running nightly, you could then run it every hour, or maybe even on your pull requests. Um, mm -hmm. Or if you have an hour long suite, you could reduce that down to, uh, I think it ends up being something like 12 minutes um, right. with Launchable. And that could then be executed on every push in your, um, in your branches and things like that. Exactly. Um, so we've developed kind of a uh, approach that uses the CLI. Um, uh, it's kind of command prompt driven, and it works inside your kind of existing build systems. Um, what's the setup time and whatnot look like with Launchable? The as you mentioned, yeah, we recently released uh, the Launchable CLI, which is a Real, it provides a really straightforward interface to Launchable uh, to add to your CI process. Um, essentially, you need to you just need to install our Python CLI in your um, in your CI environment or add it to your CI script. And then to train a model, it's it's two commands in our CLI. One is to record builds, and the other one is to record test results that relate to that build. Um, and that that'll train the model. And then once the model is ready for ready for use. We ask you to come back in and add one more command to uh, to actually request a subset of tests and feed that into your test runner. So we try to make it as, as quick and easy as possible. Um, like I said, just uh, just three additional lines really in your in your CI script to uh, to use Launchable and, and cut down that execution time. Great. Well, um, I think that about wraps it up today. Um, if folks are interested in learning more, there's an excellent article on uh, the rise of test impact analysis up on martinfowler.com by Paul Hammett. And uh, we're writing content about this on our blog. Uh, you can get started at uh, launchableinc.com.